In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Rhythm Capital Corporation, ticker RITM. This company was formerly known as New Residential, ticker NRZ, up until last June when they decided to rebrand their company. This is the second video that's a part of my portfolio reveal series where I'm doing an analysis of all 31 stocks currently in my own portfolio. If you're new to my channel, my primary focus is on income investing and also dividend growth investing with holdings that offer at least a 4% yield. As I'll say in every video in this series, this isn't done in any particular order. So just because this video is second in this series does not mean that this is my second favorite stock or my second largest holding. Also note that because I own all these stocks, I am biased towards them, so do your own research before making any investment decision for yourself. Also let me know if there's any improvements to this series that I can make going forward. Feel free to check out last week's video where I did an in-depth analysis on Alrock Capital Corporation, ticker ORCC. So logging into my Vanguard account where I do all my dividend investing, as of the making of this video, I currently own 603.638 shares of RITM stock. Rhythm pays quarterly dividends, with their last being for $0.25 cents per share. Unfortunately, Rhythm Capital hasn't paid a special dividend since 2014, so that's not something that we can expect on a regular basis with this stock. With the number of shares that I own of RITM, I receive roughly $150.90 in dividends each quarter, or divided by 3, which is what I typically like to do, that comes out to roughly $50.30 a month in dividends from Rhythm Capital. This stock is currently one of my largest holdings for a mortgage real estate investment trust, both in terms of capital invested and how much I collect in dividends. Rhythm Capital operates as an investment manager that operates a vertically integrated mortgage platform. They invest in real estate and related properties in the U.S. as well as Europe. Rhythm provides capital and services to the real estate and financial service sectors. Its investment portfolio comprises of mortgage servicing-related assets, residential securities and loans, and single-family rental loans. Because they're a real estate investment trust, they're required by law to pay out 90% of their earnings to shareholders in the form of dividends. Rhythm's also currently the fourth largest MREIT with over $32 billion in assets and they currently serve around 3 million U.S. customers as of December of last year. I've said this several times on my channel before and I'll keep repeating it, but out of all the higher yielding types of investments, mortgage REITs are probably one of my least favorite. That's because a lot of the most well-known companies in this sector have a long history of dividend cuts, including Annalee Capital Management, AG&C, and Orchid Island, and so forth. And given the nature of how most MREITs operate in our high interest rate environment, these companies perform significantly worse than average than the other higher yielding companies out there like BDCs and many closed end funds. So naturally, I don't like to invest a ton of money into MREITs because I consider them to be one of the riskier types of holdings out there. Anytime I do invest in a mortgage REIT, they have to have something that I'd consider to be a good competitive advantage. There's got to be something about how they do their business and how they operate that separates them from the Annalee Capitals and the Invesco mortgage companies out there. Rhythm Capital, I believe, is one of those mortgage REITs. It's a company that I think has done really well in adapting and changing their business in order to better position themselves, considering how risky MREITs are by nature. As I previously mentioned, if you weren't aware, Rhythm Capital was originally founded as New Residential Corporation all the way back in 2011. Back then, the company had three major focuses, which were investing in excess mortgage servicing rights, non-agency residential mortgage-backed securities, and agency residential mortgage-backed securities. They also used to invest in some rather unusual types of debt, including credit card debt, which was unusual for an MREIT. But for years, this was the company's bread and butter, and they continued to perform pretty well for about six years or so. But during the pandemic, the company took a major hit when they needed to sell a lot of their assets, which they needed to sell at a discount. This resulted in their share price tanking and their dividend distributions being cut significantly. Originally paying 50 cents a quarter, in the heat of the pandemic, they dropped it all the way down to just 5 cents per quarter. After building it back up for a few quarters, today the company now pays 25 cents per share per quarter in dividends. But it was during the pandemic and even before the pandemic, New Residential was in the process of transforming their business and moving in a new direction. The company wanted to ensure that they could better perform under all economic environments, and as a result, they made some seriously big changes. Over the past few years, New Residential had started acquiring more real estate companies to diversify their income streams. In 2021, the company acquired Genesis Capital, which is a company that offers bridge, fix and flip, and construction loans to developers. They also acquired Caliber Home Loans, which is a large national mortgage lender. Additionally, they now also own Guardian Asset Management, which is a company that provides property management services like inspections, repairs, and more to government and non-government properties. Then they also own East Street Appraisal, which is a company that provides property appraisals, and Adore, which is a company that owns single-family rental properties. So you can see just how well this company's been branching out to help themselves diversify. They're no longer just investing in mortgage-backed securities or mortgage servicing rights. They've really extended and diversified their revenue streams. But that's not all they've done to transform themselves. Last June, the company announced that they were in the process of internalizing their management, which was a big decision for them. There's two types of mortgage REITs out there, which are internally managed and externally managed companies. And even though both types of M REITs can still perform well, it's still better to be internally managed. 
When you're externally managed, you're paying another financial institution a lot of money to basically manage your own company's investments. If you manage your own investments in-house, it can save you a good amount of money each quarter. According to their second quarter 2022 investor presentation, the company expects that internalizing their investments will save them as much as $65 million a year. It's an expensive move to internalize yourself, but considering the yearly savings going forward, it's going to be more than worth it for this company. Finally, after transforming themselves so much over the past couple years, the company decided to change their name to Rhythm Capital, which I think nearly all of us can agree that this has been their worst decision so far. I don't know anyone who actually likes this new name, but I say who really cares as long as the company's been performing up to expectations and even better. Over the past few quarters, while many MREITs have been struggling in this sector, Rhythm Capital's been very steady. With the company currently paying 25 cents per share in dividends each quarter, as of last quarter, they actually earned about 33 cents in distributable income. This gives their stock a current dividend coverage percentage of 132%, which is really good. All throughout 2022, Rhythm's been able to fully cover their dividend payouts, unlike Annaly Capital and Armor Residential, two Emery who have just recently cut their dividends in the last few months. And with all things considered in our high interest rate environment, this kind of performance for an Emery has been outstanding. But I haven't even touched on probably the biggest thing that sets Rhythm's investment portfolio apart from many of their peers. Most Emery's are heavily invested in mortgage-backed securities but Rhythm specializes in something called mortgage servicing rights. These are agreements set up by a mortgage lender to have a third-party company basically manage the mortgage on their behalf. The third-party company is basically responsible for collecting the payments from the borrower and performing other administrative tasks. So for example, a bank will issue out a mortgage to an individual and then they'll give Rhythm Capital the responsibility of collecting the payments and forwarding them on to the bank. And in exchange, the bank will pay Rhythm Capital a certain amount of money for every single mortgage that they service. Given how high interest rates are, you might think the company would actually be losing money since people are taking out fewer mortgages. But mortgage servicing rights actually increase in value as interest rates rise because there's less prepayment risk. It's a great situation for Rhythm Capital to be in because when interest rates are high, then the value of MSRs increases. When interest rates are down, then more people take out mortgages and the demand for Rhythm services increases. Not to mention the company still has a lot of other revenue streams to bring in income like their property management company and their single family rental business. Currently, 73% of their portfolio is made up of servicing assets with a smaller percentage towards other things. Their book value has also been much more stable than the majority of MREITs out there that I've seen, which is a really important metric for these kinds of investments. In summary, when looking at how Rhythm Capital has been positioning themselves in recent years, I've been really impressed with how they've evolved. Still, given how risky MREITs are, I'm not significantly invested in them. But out of all the MREITs that exist, Rhythm Capital has to be one of my favorites. With that being said, that's going to wrap up our look at Rhythm Capital. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. You'll also have the option of reading this analysis as well as every other analysis that I do in this series. Plus, it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.